Hi, everybody. I was a classroom teacher for 15 years, and I'm still a teacher at heart. Only now I teach people about restorative practice. And restorative practice offers language, skills, tools to consciously build positive relationships and to manage conflict when it occurs in a healthy way. And I'm going to share one of those tips with you tonight. I have done a lot of research in this area, um, helping teachers to implement restorative practice in their most challenging classes and with their most challenging students. And the positive outcomes have really inspired my passion and commitment for the work that I now do. I really believe in it as a teacher, as a human being in the world. I feel it has so much to offer us all. And at the heart of the restorative approach are the values, the restorative values, such as empathy and respect. And I will share a time with you where I'm really rocking those values in my classroom. But first, I'm going to tell you a story about a time where I've armoured up and disconnected. And this, this example is classroom based, but any of you in the audience that has a teenager in your life might be able to relate to this scenario. It's a Thursday afternoon and I'm tired, a little bit overwhelmed, and one of my lovely students, Lauren, comes in without her homework done. And I jump straight to the attack, you know, given out, and she raised her eyes to heaven. And I say, did you just raise your eyes to heaven? <laughs> and she says, uh, yeah. And I said, well, we'll see about that after school at half past three. And she said, no, we won't, because I won't be there. And I said, oh, yes, you will. And if you're not there, you'll be in big trouble. I didn't quite know what the trouble was going to be, <laughs> but I knew I was going to put a lot of effort and energy into finding it, you know? And at the time, I'm the poster girl in my school for restorative practice. And I could hear this voice in my head saying, what are you doing? And I can't help it, you know? I'm just on one, and it escalates. The whole class is like that, I go home with a headache. And in that power struggle with Lauren, I've disconnected from my values. I am not trying to connect with Lauren and cultivate empathy. I'm not modeling respect, which isn't something you hustle for, whether you have your homework done or not. It's just a given, because we are. I wasn't promoting accountability, giving Lauren power to be part of the solution. I was just trying to punish her and make her do what I say because I say so. Where are my values there? As a teacher, I've always felt that what we know matters, but who we are matters more. And I didn't like who I was that day. I wasn't being my best self, although I was probably doing the best I could in that moment, because calm is a superpower. <laughs> Brené Brown, an empathy researcher, and my very favorite TED talker of all time, by the way, maybe until tonight, but she, she says that calm is a practice that it's not like we're born, you're a calm person or you're not. Calm people practice two things before they respond. Do you know what they do? They breathe and they ask questions. So the next day, Lauren comes in like this and she sits down, she's looking at me. And if I'm being totally honest, part of me is like, oh, it's on. <laughs> and then I breathe. And I ask myself a very powerful question. And this question has been a great friend to me over the years. It's who do I want to be in this situation? And of course, I want to be someone that models and lives my values. What's brilliant about restorative practice is that it offers a scaffold, an explicit language to breathe life into the values. So they're values and action. Especially helpful in times of challenge when we can easily armor up, disconnect and miss our opportunity for empathy. So I invite Lauren to connect with me by asking and modeling these very six simple questions. And I say, uh, look, Lauren, I just want to discuss what happened yesterday with the homework, OK? And she says, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I said, at the time, I wasn't thinking. And I went straight to the attack. And since then, I'm thinking, I really could have handled that better. I'm sorry for how I spoke to you. And she said to me straight away, Mr. Grant, I was pure cheeky. And I said, look, from your perspective, what happened? And she said, well, I came in, I didn't have my homework done, you went mad at me. And she said, I was a bit cheeky. And I said, OK. I said, look, what were you thinking at the time? And she said, I was thinking, had I done something on you, or you didn't like me or something, I've never seen you go on like that before. And I said, no, um, my mom was sick at the time. I said, Lauren, my mom's not well, and I'm tired, and I think I just probably took it out on you, you know? I said, what are you thinking now? My third question. And she said, you were just having a bad day. I said, I was just having a bad day. I said, look, fourth question, who was affected by that? I said, I know I was very stressed. I said, I took it to the next class. 
and I was guilty, felt a bit guilty when I went home. I said, how about you? And she said, yeah, I was upset. I was a bit embarrassed. And she said, I was kind of worried about coming here today. I said, I'm sorry, I know. And she said, no, I'm sorry too. And I said, okay, well, look, what could we have done differently? Fifth question. And she said, I said, look, from my perspective, I think I could have calmly said, can I speak to you at the end? I said, how about you? And she said, she says, I could have told you the start, I didn't have my homework done. And I said, yeah. Or like, you could have done the homework, you know? <laughs> and uh, she's like, oh yeah, yeah. But we had a chat about what happened that the homework wasn't done. And our sixth question, what needs to happen next? And honestly, Lauren and I got on better since that day than ever. It was an opportunity to practice empathy. There's a huge empathy deficit in our culture. And empathy is something that we can teach, it can grow, but you need to cultivate it. And the restorative questions facilitate that. They do two things. They invite us to see each other's perspective, a key ingredient of empathy. And they allow us to feel with one another, which is what empathy is, to feel with others. I now work in schools, in organizations with teachers and students, who wish to cultivate a restorative culture. But this is relevant in the classroom, in the boardroom, in the living room, wherever there's people and relationships. So I'd invite you, the next time you find yourself maybe in a challenging situation or in, in a difficult conversation, to practice calmness, to pause, ask yourself, who do I want to be in this situation? And maybe instead of saying, why is the dishwasher still full? Ask, what happened that the dishwasher's full? Or, why are you late? What happened that you're late? Why did you just say that to your sister? What happened that you said that to your sister? Or in my case, what happened that the homework isn't done? And it might just allow us to turn towards one another. People in the workshops and lectures I do often ask me, does restorative practice really work? And what they want to know, usually, is does the other person change? And in my example, it might look like success lies in the fact that Lauren chose to work with me the second day. In my own practice, in all my research, there is huge evidence that a restorative approach maximizes the potential for this. But I'd urge you not to look at external outcome as your only lens or measure of success. Maya Angelou, my favorite writer, says that success is liking yourself, liking what you do, and liking how you do it. And the truth is, I really like who I am when I'm restorative and being who I want to be in the world. So for me, it always works. Practically speaking, the questions move us from blame and attack to empathy, the heart of difficult conversations. And on a personal note, I believe that spiritually, they move us from fear to love. And this is what I think our lovely world needs, more empathy, more love. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs>